to say. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Let me just start up by saying something. I cannot believe that it's already October. Let me tell you, folks, when you get to my age, life goes too fast. <laughs> so, October? I turned on the TV the other day. I thought, oh, they're advertising jack-o'-lanterns already? It was just Trump. I was... <laughs> Every time I think he's going to go down in the polls, he goes up in the polls. This guy, I think, really thinks he's going to be president. And I, uh, he could be. And you know how I know this? Because now the wife has started to do interviews. Did you see that? His, his Slovenian wife, Melania, did her first interview because she might be the first lady. And you know, when you're the first lady, you always have to have a little first lady project. Right? Like Laura Bush had literacy and Michelle Obama has childhood obesity and uh, uh, Melania said she wants to make sure that young girls know how to work the pole. I mean, <laughs> the pole. I meant walk the runway. I misspoke. But then they asked Melania what she thought about her, uh, her husband, you know, wanting to deport all the Mexicans. And she said, look, I'm from the Balkans. I know ethnic cleansing. I think he can do it. <laughs> But speaking of that, someone has started a pointless military operation in the Middle East, and for once it wasn't us. <laughs> That's right. Russia is bombing. So Vladimir Putin would like to take Syria off of our hands, and I have one word for him. Sold. <laughs> Sold. Let's... <laughs> Let's get him to sign the papers before he sobers up. I mean, that's like selling a diesel Volkswagen with blood on the tires. I am for it. But of course, we'll never do that because it would make too much sense. Instead, America and Russia are fighting over Syria like it's a girl. <laughs> Meanwhile, neither one of us wants to have anything to do with Afghanistan. We're like, that bitch is crazy. <laughs> But this is serious. I mean, if Russia shoots down one of our planes or vice versa, you know, this could be World War III. It could go nuclear. And then we will never get to the bottom of what's in Hillary's emails. <laughs> oh, yeah, <ay>, yeah. <laughs> Did you see this this week? Russian hackers have tried to hack into Hillary's emails five times now. Uh, you know what? She is the most boring person in the world, and everyone wants to read her emails. I don't understand this. And here's the weird thing about, you know, running as she does the Clinton Foundation Global Initiative uh, and also getting spam. When a Nigerian prince emails you and says he... <laughs> he says he's never met you and wants to move millions into your bank account, he actually means it. Uh, now... <laughs> Now, I'm sure you saw we had another horrific school shooting this week. And of course, as it always happens, every Republican in Congress said this is awful, but we cannot politicize tragedy. Now, if you'll excuse us, we'll have to get back to our Benghazi hearings. <laughs> the irony of getting back to the Benghazi hearings. Okay, all right, sure. All right, I'll, <laughs> I'll restate it over there in case you, the folks who missed that one. But. Uh, <laughs> and then Kevin McCarthy, you're familiar with this guy. He's the one who's going to replace, he's from California. He's going to replace John Boehner as the Speaker of the House. And he was <laughs> kind of pulled a boner. He was on, uh, <laughs> he was on, on Hannity. Uh, <laughs> and Hannity was asking him about, you know, what are your accomplishments? And he said the words. He said, well, everybody thought Hillary was unbeatable. And then we put together a Benghazi committee. And what are her numbers now? Dropping. And his fellow Republicans were a little upset that he let their true motives out of the bag. And Fox News was furious that he broke with their format and said something true. So, <laughs> but here's some good news for liberals. They got the Pope back today. You know, they thought they lost the Pope this week because it came out that he had a private meeting with Kim Davis. <laughs> <laughs> and Francis must have gotten an earful from the gay community. And when I say the gay community, I mean the guys back at the Vatican. Uh, 
but <laughs> but all is well today the vatican totally walked it back they said first of all it was a very very brief meeting it was a wham bam bless you ma'am out of there. And he doesn't endorse, the Pope doesn't endorse what Kim Davis stands for. And most important, they said, for a holy man like the Pope, it's important that he spend time with a woman like Kim Davis to remind him that a lifetime of abstinence isn't so bad. <laughs> reasonable. Okay, now three more women have come forward <laughs> to accuse Bill Cosby of assaulting them bringing the grand total to North America. And I don't know what to <laughs> I don't know what to say anymore about this guy except he has tranquilized more women than scented candles. 